Hello! Hi everybody! Welcome! It's time for Social Distancing Sunday School. Gather around everybody. Come on in. Let's have a chat. How are you this week? Doing good? Doing all right? Well look, I'm here at the church grounds today and some of the new signs and some of the new prayer stations have been put up are awesome. And um, I love being here at the church grounds, so I'm glad to be here. Uh, today's lesson, we're going to talk a little bit about Jacob. And so we talked a little bit about Jacob a couple of weeks ago, and he had left his homeland to go live with his uncle for a while, which he has been living with his uncle. And uh, since then, he has been staying with his uncle for a while, and he's gotten married, and he has uh, two wives and some servants and 11 children. And he's decided to return back to his homeland to face his estranged brother, um, Esau and there was some trouble between Jacob and Esau as children and Esau kind of uh, wants to uh, come after Jacob and so Jacob's a little bit nervous about going home and this is what happened when he was on his way home and just before he gets to the place where he's going to confront Esau this is what happens Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him until daybreak when the man saw that, de that he did not prevail against Jacob, he struck him on the hip socket, and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled him. Then he said, Let me go, for the day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go until you bless me. So he said to him, What is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then the man said, you shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have wrestled with God and with humans and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, Please tell me your name. But he said, Why is it that you ask my name? And he blessed him right there. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, For I have seen God face to face, and yet my life is preserved. The sun rose and upon him, and as he passed out, Peniel limping because of his hip. Okay, so um, Jacob, we're going to do just a little bit about the names. Anytime in the Bible that somebody gets a name change, that marks a significant moment in that person's life. It's usually a spiritual transformative moment, um, a time when somebody kind of makes that transition in their spiritual life. Um, and something new is happening to them, and they get a name change. And so this is one of the many times in the Bible where somebody gets a name change. So Jacob, the name Jacob, uh, I looked this up, and it has, depending on where you look, it has several different meanings, but something akin to being a trickster um, or being deceptive. The name Jacob sort of means trickster. But the name Israel means wrestles with God or or strives with God um, and so and then even the name of the place Jacob names the place where that event took place um, and he names it um, Peniel or Peniel um, there's a couple of, actually a couple of different spelling variations right here in the text um, which means that uh, the face of God that I've seen the face of God and so this is an interesting moment where Jacob's name changes from trickster to wrestles with God. And in fact, Jacob, he has um, lots of descendants. The descendants of Jacob become known as the Israelites, um, who are now the Hebrew people. And so the Israelites, the people of Israel, um, are known as the people who wrestle with God. And so this passage kind of reminds me of a story that I heard once a long time ago, and I don't remember when or where exactly I heard this story, um, so I can't give you the exact reference, um, but it goes something like this. There was a young pastor working in a temple, uh, or, or a, a young rabbi working in a temple. And in this temple, the people had been arguing and arguing and debating and debating for months. And, you know, the young rabbi didn't know what to do, and he was frustrated with the people in the temple. 
And so one day he went to go visit the old folks at the home for ancient Hebrews. And he was visiting the oldest member of the temple. And he said, uh, I've got a question for you. I really need your help. Um, is it the tradition that we stand during this certain prayer to lift up our glory to God, to glorify God? And the old man said, no, no, that is not the tradition. And so the young rabbi said, oh, good. So then it's the tradition that we sit during this certain prayer to show our humility before God. And the old man said, no, no, that is not the tradition. And the young rabbi says, please, please, sir, you've got to help me. I, the, the, the congregation has been debating and arguing for months. And the old man said, ah, that, that is the tradition. And so that has been the tradition uh, for all this time that, that the nation of Israel, the people of Israel wrestle with God. And we have a lot of these really difficult questions. And maybe some of our questions are kind of like, do we sit or do we stand during this certain prayer during a worship service? But some of the questions are really big and really complex and difficult to answer. And so we tend to ask these questions. And some of these questions are things that humans have been wrestling with for thousands of years. Um, and for several years, I was teaching Sunday school to the teenagers in our church. And teenagers are great. And they like to ask really deep and thoughtful and complicated questions. And there were more than a few times that I would, I didn't have the answer. <laughs> I just, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that question because it's so deep and it's so complex. And it's, and I would just say to them, I would say, look, this is one of those questions that humanity has wrestled with uh, for thousands of years. Some of these deep theological questions, um, some of these really difficult, like almost existential questions are things that we wrestle with. And um, we now have um, times in human history where we are really wrestling with, oh, I'm getting eaten up by bugs, sorry. Um, we are wrestling with questions um, of justice, and we are wrestling with issues of social justice. And um, so I really think that that's the important thing. It's not whether or not we have the right answer or the wrong answer, or I know definitively that what I think is true. No, 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 no. That is not the tradition. The tradition is that we wrestle with God even. And this story from Jacob, um, and a lot of people, I read a lot of different things about this story and some people try to explain it. Is, it is, is Jacob wrestling with God or is Jacob wrestling with an angel or is this just a metaphor for Jacob's internal wrestling? Uh, well, th the answer to that question really is less important than what is our takeaway? And for me, the takeaway is the wrestling, that that's a key important thing. I would, I've had people come up to me and ask me questions or they say, you know, I'm really struggling with this issue or I'm really struggling with this question um, because I was raised to believe this and now I have this new experience in my life um, that has, has changed the way I view the world or the way I changed to change the way I view this particular issue. And honestly, I would rather ha hear people say, I'm struggling to understand this, um, because that means you're wrestling with God. It, it, you're wrestling with the question and you're wrestling with the answers. I'd rather have hear people say, and I think it's a good thing for people to say, I'm wrestling with this. I don't understand. I, I, I'm, I'm, conflicted. Um, I'm, I'm having trouble with this. I'd rather people say that than to be set in a mindset where, you know what, I've learned everything that there is to learn. I know all that there is to know. And I know uh, everything that there is to know about God. I have nothing left that I need to know about. And this is this. This is it. I know everything. I have all of the answers. Uh, because that's not how it is. You know, our relationship with God is one of wrestling. 
And so we continue that tradition of Israel the wrestles with God. And if we are in that tradition, then we should strive to wrestle with God and to not settle for easy answers, but rather to be in the struggle, to be a part of that struggle and to wrestle. You know, we have this, it's almost an idiom really. When somebody's been struggling with a particular question or a particular issue, you say, I've been wrestling with this in my mind for weeks. And that's where the idiom comes from this story of Jacob wrestling with God. Um, and so that's a good thing if you're conflicted, if you're unsure, if you're not, uh, uh, if you don't have all of, if you feel like you don't have all of the answers, I would rather say I don't have the answers. Uh, I would rather say I am struggling than to say I know exactly how things are supposed to be. Uh, so that's my lesson for today. Um, so today uh, I'm going to close in prayer. And I, I know that sometimes I forget to close my um, videos in prayer. Um, but the, so in honor of this struggle, I'm going to phrase the prayer today with a lot of questions um, to illustrate that we're struggling, we're wrestling with God um, in these difficult questions. So Lord God, Lord God, I just ask you, how is it that we are to follow in your way? Lord God, how is it that we are to follow your will? How is it that we are to know your way? How can we be sure, God? How can we know that we're doing the right thing, God? And how is it that we can learn to be better people and to learn to, to know your way? God, we struggle and we wrestle with these questions and we wrestle with so many questions of justice and, and politics. And it is good and it is well. And God, we just ask that you wrestle with us and be a part of our struggle and to be with us as we ask the many questions. God, how, how can we best serve you, God? And how can we best be a part of our community? Amen. Thank you guys for watching. I hope to see everybody really soon, and if not, I will see you next week in my weekly videos. Have a great week, everybody. Bye-bye.